Hello and welcome to the install of our Tesla battery and inverter and charge controller and all that stuff. Our electrical system on our trailer. We're here with our good friends Maxton and Corbin. You know them. They've helped us on our last ones and we love going camping with them and hanging out. They must be insane to still help us with this because this is a lot of work and I can't do this alone but I'm getting better with every install. So I also have to give a huge shout out to the Mortons on the move. They kind of pioneered this and have a really great install video, great diagram on their website of how they set everything up. This is going to go under the bed. We've cut a piece out that fits perfectly under there. We're going to mount everything to that, carry it into the RV, just install it there and connect a few wires. So we used to be sponsored by Magnum and this time we are trying Victron units. We'll see how they go. I really like Magnum stuff. It was super robust. Um, I like that you didn't have to buy a whole bunch of controllers and stuff to run everything. Everything just plugged together. Victron looks cool and it's a little bit cheaper. Most of it's made in India but it looks like it's built to a high quality. But I am finding we had to buy a whole bunch of expensive monitors to control everything and they don't all talk to each other so it's really a shame like we've got this $500 monitor there that can program a lot of things but not everything so we still had to buy this $200 monitor and yeah it's just kind of annoying that one system doesn't talk to everything Coming together. Not real much to say about this other than we're connecting wires and we've got a great little layout here. This is a great idea of Corbin to map it out on a piece of wood first, build it on here and then just screw that whole thing into the RV. This whole section is done. It just needs to be, oh look you probably haven't met the baby yet. Meet little Dusty. Okay we have our board all put together. It's ready to go in the trailer and it just needs some connections, some inputs from the trailer and from our battery. Let me try and walk you through what's going on here. Here is our inverter. This is a 3000 watt 24 volt hybrid inverter. So this is a 24 volt system because we're running the Tesla battery which operates at 24 volts. So anything that runs 12 volt in the trailer like water pump, lights, uh, fans, all that stuff has to be 12 volts, not 24. So what this little guy does is it converts 24 volts in to 13.8 or 12 volts out. So then the trailer is still going to see 12 volts and it's going to think it's seeing a normal battery even though everything else is bigger. All right, so what's going to happen is the battery is going to go to a fuse, the positive then that is going to come over here to our battery protect. The battery protect prevents us from draining our battery and keep pulling power. So once the battery reaches a certain voltage, it's a switch inside that disconnects so we don't completely drain and destroy our battery. From there we get power to this. So this is all 24 volt battery power. Some of that goes into our inverter so that we can run all of our 110 AC stuff inside the trailer. We've got our grounds here. So this is our solar charge controller. It takes power from the solar panels in here, does some calculations, and decides how much to feed to the battery. When the battery's full, it stops feeding it. But just in case, we have another battery protect here. This is a redundancy switch just to protect our battery. So if this accidentally kept feeding voltage when it shouldn't, or if I bumped a setting or something, this little protect is going to be set up so it says once the batteries reach a certain voltage do not let any more power come in it, just in case someone messed up the setting on this or something. What a nice clean install. This can just go right into the trailer now. Alright we got tons of room under here. Just have to decide where the battery is going to end up. We know this is going to end up vertically against that wall in there. One of the reasons we got this trailer was because of how much underbed storage it had. Like a glove. 
All right, now we're drilling a hole to get our wires from here into where the control panel is. You can see this is right where the plug goes in and our charge converter is in there. So this is a perfect install location. All right, so we've got our wires coming out of here into there, into our control panel in there. We disconnected the charger in here because our inverter is also a charger. We'll be running these wires from that to charge this. And it also handles all the AC distribution. So AC goes into that, comes out, and panel and powers this panel. Same with DC right here. We're going to be wiring that as well with these red and black wires. So those three wires are what's on the other side of this 30 amp plug. So that thing takes the power from the pedestal and then redistributes it back into the trailer. And it does some inverting too when that's not plugged in. All right, we got the multimeter out. That means everything's connected. It's alive. We've got everything connected. This is exciting. Our color control is working. A little bit disappointed that that doesn't control more than it does. Uh, we've got our battery monitor here. I've got to figure out how to program that. I've got to figure out how to program my low voltage disconnect and my high voltage disconnect. And I'm super bummed that, I mean, this is a $600 part. That is very expensive for something that just tells you what's going on on your batteries. And we assumed that with this, we could run the Victron software and program our highs and our lows and our cutoffs and our flow voltage and absorption and all that stuff. But you can't. There's only two ways to do it. One, you buy yet another Victron product, some $70 adapter so you can connect it to your computer download their software, do it all on your computer. I don't have time to get one of those and have it shipped and there are no Victron dealers within hundreds of miles. Or two, you can use some dip switches in there and switch certain things and count certain seconds on that. And unfortunately that's what I'm gonna have to do to get this thing totally balanced for all that. At least it's doable, but man, I mean, you're looking at $750 of monitors right here, and they can't even set the voltages on this thing, which is really disappointing. So, so far everything's been good. Um, I'll let you know what I think about the Victron stuff. I'm super excited about the Tesla battery. Everything went together without a hitch. I just wished I'd known I needed that adapter to program this thing on a computer, because this thing can't do it. And stay tuned as we install a heck of a lot of solar on this to be able to charge this and live completely off-grid. I just have to give a huge shout out to my buddy Corbin who spent all day here helping me install this. He is the man, again. Couldn't have done this without him. It's so fun to learn about this stuff. And he does a killer job with the install. Alright, my Victron interface finally came one of the many seventy dollar adapters i need to run this setup so i can program all my charging parameters but before that i want to install some led strip lighting in here so i can light it all up with a little switch this is 24 volts so it does not have to go through my step down converter just gonna solder some leads on there throw it on a switch and call it good I just need to give another shout out to Morton's on the move for his amazing videos explaining how he got the Tesla battery running, his wiring diagram, it's fantastic. I'll link to that. You guys need to check that out if you're doing something similar. And today we're going to be using the charge settings from Will Prouse. Another huge shout out to him. Thank you, Will. All right, port selection, com port, auto detect. I've spent the last two hours trying to download drivers which they don't have on their website and it will now recognize the USB device but it won't recognize the inverter and it is so frustrating their support is awful <sighs> I just need to set my max flow absorption all those voltages for charging and then I can use the system and have the batteries charging by default it's going to want to charge those at like 27 29 volts and that's going to make it catch on fire so I can't do that I am super frustrated with Victron right now. They should just have a driver download 
their stuff isn't working. When you go on Amazon and you read other people's reviews of this uh, Mark III connector, they say the same exact thing, that they can't get it to connect or recognize anyway. I am super frustrated. I don't have time to be sitting here doing drivers. I've got to be working on the I gotta be working on the rest of the trailer. So, even though Victron's been disappointing, check this out. Boom! Really nice light in there. Love it. Just a little rope light. 24 volt, straight to the battery. It's been four hours trying to troubleshoot it. It was a bad RJ whatever ethernet style cable. Oh, now it's working, thank goodness. All done, I still need to fine tune the settings. We're charging up to 24.3 volts. That's a good safe range. All right, this is our inverter and charger. It's charging up our batteries to my specific numbers. And this is ready to be buttoned up and cleaned up and protected so nothing slides into it and shorts out.